And, mm-hmm. and at the end of the day, if, if I have a solution that's very clear and it's a proven path and, and anyone who I, who I uncover that with tells me that they want to yeah. think about it, it's because I missed the question. And, and I spent a lot of time with you on this call. I don't want to miss any questions. So when you guys do talk about it, what's that question? And then they should, you should be able to get it out of them. Mm, that's good. Does that make sense? That, that, that's checkmate, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Um, right. so let's go ahead and get to the, the challenge where I could help you specifically, um, right. maybe assist you with the platform that you have. Cause the platform that you have right now is very similar to the platform that I have. So I want to be able to, to give you some insight on, on what my team is doing, what I'm doing right now to, to help mm-hmm. really catapult your production and get you to that next right. level. Right. Absolutely. Um, so the struggle I have now is not le- necessarily getting the borrower to agree when they're able to qualify, right? Just getting them to accept. The problem that I have now is the moment that they make that agreement, they send me the documentation, there's a high fallout from basically me getting the documentation versus them continuing moving forward with the loan. So I think that's something I definitely want to work on because I don't want to spend three hours on a call and essentially find out that they're not wanting to move forward. Yep. I so, uh, don't mean to interrupt, but you said, so they'll send in the documentation, but then cancel yeah. or they don't send the documentation? Um, the people that have gotten documentation, they won't cancel, but there's people who I've asked to go ahead and send me the documents as soon as possible within 24 hours so I can reserve their spot, build that bridge across, right? Do I sound like somebody? Yeah, man. <laughs> that reservation. Yeah, that reservation. <laughs> So trust me, I'm like studying your craft overall. So I, I let them know, I'm like, I want to validate the bitch to build across, hold your reservation, and then be able to confirm your ability to proceed. Essentially, I just, I'm just like you. Yeah. And I'm, I hope I'm not copywriting anything, but overall, no. essentially, when I'm doing that, it's like I'm just trying to tweak, tighten up the nuts and bolts a little bit in terms of the conversion you know like them actually sending me the documents moving forward with the urgency too as well so sure I'm trying to figure out okay so um typically by now you may kind of get a sense right like of if they're going to send in their docs or not you kind of have this little insight of like dude i don't know if that's one that's going to come through do you are you there yet where yeah. after you do the pitch and you're like okay i need in order to um validate your ability to proceed i can reserve it for 24 hours but if, right. if I don't get these documents in, you can sense through their tonality of how they respond to you, the likelihood of you getting those steps. Right, can you sense that? Yeah, I can. Okay. So um, when you do get that sense, typically it's because one of two things, either one, um, the decision maker wasn't there yet, or two, there's a, there's a hidden question that was not yet answered. And because they were on the phone with you for so long, they can hesitate to bring up that question because they just they're exhausted. Right. So right. I'd say that's probably the catch 22 of it. And one of the reasons because I there's loan officers in my in my floor also that use that method of exhausting them. But what I have found is that that method sometimes creates this buyer's remorse because they spent so long with you. And then if they they hear that you can qualify them, they're going to want to know who else can qualify them. Um, granted, some of them may not want to go through that four hour uh, turn time and in, in, in figuring it out again. But ultimately, what happens when we release that loan estimate, they can then take it somewhere else and say, OK, well, look, I already went through that four hour period. What can you give? Right. right. So um, I, I would say that that, you know, when you get that sense, there has to be a way to extract what those questions are. And um, usually when it comes up like right, like you could go all the way through the entire phone conversation and at the very end, you get that sense that they may not um, uh, give you the full documentation, right? So right. what I've done in, in cases like that where I've gotten a sense of them kind of being flaky or them likely likelihood of them not really sending it in was that I would, I would actually ask them and say, okay, so I'm going to go and put in your reservation right now. What time tomorrow morning can you have a majority of these documents in hand? And based on their question, or I'm sorry, based on the way they answer the question, it, I can tell whether or not they plan to proceed, right? And so if they did not plan to proceed, they would say, I don't know, uh, just give me a call back. I'll see if I can have it at this time. Because this is the, the part where we kind of almost technically go in for the kiss, right? 
So right. say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go to reserve this for 24 hours. I do need your documents in order for me to validate your ability to proceed. So what I could do is just reserve it. But if we don't meet that reservation with 24 hours, you're, 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 it's going to be canceled and you're up for market condition at that point. And, uh, and, so, and so there's a sense sometimes from their reaction when we're getting closer towards that part of the call where we can we know that they are not likely to, to move forward because of their tone, the way they're answering the questions. And then so if I get a sense that they're not fully sold yet, I can usually hear it from their tone and by the way they answer the question or answer the question that I'm asking. So for right. example, if I say, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna go and reserve it right now, I'll hook them in with this one question to dig out or become my bridge to, an to ask the question, of what they're not telling me. And it works something like this. It says, um, you know, okay, I'm gonna go and reserve it right now. What time tomorrow morning will you have a majority of these items ready to submit? And what they're going to say is if they're not necessarily bought in yet, they're gonna say, I don't know, I still gotta talk about it or I still gotta think about it or something that's stopping them, right? Because they don't want to, they don't wanna say something that they're not gonna deliver on. Um, and you want to break past the temptation of them uh, just telling you whatever you want to hear because they're done with talking on the phone call for two plus hours or three plus hours, right? Um, and so they don't want to ask the question because they believe the call is going to last even longer. And psychologically, from a salesman standpoint, we can also be done too. You know what I mean? Like we'd be like, man, I got to use the bathroom. I got to get off this phone real quick. But because so much is vested within that call, it's important that we kind of extract that hidden question. And so that's a way to do it um, because when they ask like, oh, I don't know, I need to think about it. Okay, got it. Now, you know, we just spent a lot of time here on the phone, on the phone call today. And I think, at least in my opinion, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I believe that I was able to provide you the solution. And typically when I, when I have such a clear solution for anyone who, I, who I'm able to actually talk with, Usually it's a no brainer, but I, I believe that there's something that you still want to think about that you still want to talk about. What is that? You know, and that's your way of going about it. Right. And then they, they should hopefully announce it to you, but sometimes they won't. They might say like, yeah, you know what? Me and my wife, we just want to go and talk about it. We want to look at the figures. We want to sleep on it. We want to go home and pray about it. We want to do this, that, or this. And say, you know, you want to invite it and say, okay, cool. Sounds good. So when you guys talk about it, what's the primary topic you guys are going to talk about? And that's the way to extract it. They're going to say, yeah, you know, we're going to talk about the fee or we're going to talk about the interest rate. And that becomes your bridge to answer what they did not, what they did not uncover. And typically it has to do with the interest rate. It has to do with their fear of missing out. It has to also do with their fear of giving a sign of commitment. And so I think that's why there's, uh, you know, the underlying words of saying, well, first, you know, unfortunately, you can't commit to anything because I don't even know if you have a bridge across. And my whole goal is to make sure that you even have a bridge across. So the documents that I'm asking for you is just going to make sure that you have a bridge to safely cross to the other side, make sure your income works, make sure your credit works and that there's not going to be any anything that actually stops or delays the process in a quick, easy close. But let me share with you an example. You know, I just got off a call earlier today with a, uh, a client that I had and we just funded their loan and they shared with me that, you know, what, what I was able to do. And it, you remind me of them because, and then this is your bridge to go over the benefits with them again and enunciate the benefits. And then after you announce the benefits and say, because I helped them also put 12 months of living in their bank account. I also help them rid all their credit card debt. I also help them get capital in their bank. And, and, and the funny thing is, it took him about three months to decide. And here's his story is that, is that if he would have made the decision right away, he would have protected himself from a higher interest rate. And I don't want to see you go, you know, because it's easier for the prospects to relate when they hear it happening to someone else. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? They they because we're naturally drawn into stories and movies, right? And so when we find commonalities with another character and we can learn from that character of of what they went through, like in other words, they shouldn't have waited because they they ultimately got a higher rate. Granted, I could deliver them a lot of value. I was able to deliver a lot of benefit. They just left me an online review of how thankful they were to finally take that step forward. And he didn't allow himself to get in his own way and actually putting together the solution. And so I thought about that 
when I was doing when I was speaking with you because you're you're in a position right now where you can end all of your your trouble or you could you could put a solution to what's actually keeping you guys up at night or what's stopping you from achieving your primary goal and uh and then and then finally to the kind of the the pinpoint right is after you you go through that you say bottom line is this is that at, you, as of right now you have two uh, you have two paths that you could choose your alternative and your current path your current path is is obviously what you're doing right now, but the alternative is to not save X amount of dollars per month, is to not get the cash for your countertops, is to not do, right? And so then you're basically spitting out the benefit, but then saying, or you cannot get all these wonderful things mm -hmm. and say, so, you know, when you guys do talk tonight, the, the question should be, do I want, and then you're going back into the benefit, do I want the X amount of dollars in savings? Do I need the extra money to avoid, you know, racking up more credit card debt, to avoid diminishing my FICO score, to avoid not having six months of living in my bank account? What right. ultimately it's, it's going to be that choice. And it, you know, I'm not, I don't want to pry into your guys' conversation, but what would you choose? Would you choose the current path right now where you don't have all those things that you need? Or would you take action and, and secure those things that you need? Right. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to come out. You're basically putting it, putting it, putting their back against the wall. And it, it, it becomes a very fine line because you don't want to do too much pressure. Otherwise, you're really going to push them away. So the tonality is very important where you right. have to come off like, hey, man, I'm trying to help you. Whereas a lot of loan officers are going to die because they become they become more uh, defensive, and mm -hmm. they they kind of uh, almost in under in essence kind of berate them. Not I don't know if that's the word, but they talk down to them. Like what is what's wrong with you? You know, like I'm telling you how to do this, and it's because they're frustrated because they took a lot of time on the call, and it could be their second you know three hour call, and then they're they're like, man, no one's buying today. And so I think that that's probably the the primary challenge that you just gotta gotta kind of invite, you know. I don't know if you caught the um, the call that I recorded. I uh, posted it on Saturday. It was um, listen to me close a sale on an actual recorded call. It's the most recent video that I uploaded to YouTube. Yeah, but you'll you'll notice in that in that video she uh, you know she gave even though she seemed compliant, uh, she gave those objections. And I knew from the way she was coming off her tonality that she was going to buy regardless, even though she was giving me those objections, I knew she was, this is something that she needed, but yeah. she came off with some legit um, objections that were very common in today's market. Like, Hey, I don't know what the future beholds or whatever. And you'll notice that both decision makers were there. She was actually the decision maker. The husband was the kind of the gatekeeper and he's the one who did the application. So you know, I'm sure, you, you know, if you follow the content information, you know to somehow incorporate um, the other person on the phone who who handles the finances. And if you're doing it in a one call close, sometimes that can be a challenge, but you just have to be proactive and know when to plant that seed um, and really leverage the the excuse of saying, OK, well, I'm going to go ahead and put all this information together for you and I'm going to release it to you. But I need your consent and I need your wife's consent or your husband's consent, too. Can we conference them in and then go into yeah. your presentation? Um, and mm -hmm. and I don't know how strict it is for you guys to do a second call. But if there's a way to to break them up into two calls, I think it's it's going to be in your favor, um, even if you have to go covert. Uh, with it and 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 just show through production and th show through numbers like hey man my process is working don't need to try to fix it and say hey, do everything on a one call close you know because um, I know they record your guys's calls they they uh, they count how much time you're on the call how much outbound calls you guys do um, so I know this you know firsthand because we do it too um, but at the same time leading a team being a manager I I don't mess with my agents who who shows results they could do it however they want they could do a nine call close they could do a one call close whatever it is is just bottom line are you producing the results and if you're finding a lot of the reasons as to why they're not taking the reservation is because oh I need to talk to my spouse I need to run it by my spouse that's a clear sign that it's because that person was not part of the conversation right right that makes sense that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah. I've been 
I've been implementing that. I've been coverting it too as well. Nice. So it's really doing a lot of these things kind of behind the scenes because I'm testing the waters. You know, yep. I want to know if this is really working. Yep. If their method actually is going to produce the right results because I might kind of play it out in a different way. Okay. You know? So, yeah, no, I definitely agree. That's really good stuff that you're giving me in terms of making sure we can extract that information out of the borrower. Yep. Yeah, because what they're going to tell you ultimately is is what what results they want to see, and yeah. it's they're not going to tell you what it will what it will mean to them if they can't produce that, and right. so we have to ask questions to extract that out of them, and so some of the questions that you'll catch on that recorded call you probably already caught it was you know um, of your net income how much of your net income followed you into this month and all I'm doing is trying to get them to not only mentally see their bank account, but also get the leverage that I need to answer the concern. Cause their concern was um, like, well, what if I just nailed, you know, what if I just buckle down and use my thousand dollars to pay off my debt myself? And, and it's like, okay, well you can do that, but here's the alternative is you could do it much faster. And, and everyone's always going to look for the fastest way to get a solution. So I'm, I'm, I'm leveraging that emotion. Uh, I'm leveraging also the fear of, of of missing out right like that's one of the strongest motives that people use to make a decision is because they fear the missing out and so that's where it's like hey that's where come uh, storytelling comes into play is yeah. just basically saying hey you remind me of a lot of another client i just helped in lake forest they had a similar situation of your own where i was able to and then spit out their same benefit i was able to help him or help her pay off about 30 grand in credit card debt what they noticed was their FICO score jumped up dramatically. I set them up on, a, on an update where after six months, I'm also going to give them a call back to help them exit their current loan and get into a shorter term. But the only yeah. difference is they're going to have a stronger FICO. They're going to have 12 months of living in the bank. And I want to know, I mean, how could you imagine that? Like have them actually imagine it. Could you imagine that with how that would feel? You know, I'm not sure if you've ever had 12 months of living in your bank. But as of right now, here's your here's your alternative is to not have that much money in the bank is to continue having less than one mortgage payment in the bank is to continue relying on overtime. You see, the met, the idea that I have is basically going to help you solve that issue. And mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, if, if I have a solution that's very clear and it's a proven path and and anyone who I who I uncover that with tells me that they want to mm -hmm. think about it, it's because I missed the question. And, and I spent a lot of time with you on this call. I don't want to miss any questions. So when you guys do talk about it, what's that question? And then they should, you should be able to get it out of them. Mm, that's good. Does that make sense? That, that, that's checkmate, right? <laughs> that, that's, you know, cause it's all about positioning yourself. And then when they announce that, that question, you have to invite it and say, oh, okay, I get it. I appreciate that. What's right. good that I, uh, that I at least know what that question is because now I can help you guys answer it. You know, um, I do my job and, and, and I'm sure a lot of the verbiage that I'm covering with you probably doesn't make sense. So I thank you very much for sharing that question with me. But ultimately here, this is the bottom line is that you want to get here and I'm going to help you get there faster. I'm going to help you get there safely. I'm going I'm to help you get there with a proven plan that I've helped thousands of clients in whatever area they're in, you know, and start tying it back into their community and announcing things that they relate to. Like uh, I've helped a lot of homeowners in the Lake Forest and Orange County area. And just like your neighbors, they'll agree with me, right? And then start going into it. So they believe that everyone's doing it with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. so the wordplay is, is very important and, um, and uh, uh, finding a way to covertly extract that question because they're gonna talk about it and, and if we don't we don't get what that question is, even if they don't give us a commitment at the end of that call to increase the likelihood of them calling us back, we have to put that answer to the question because if they do talk about it, they could talk about it without having the answer, or they could talk about it with saying, Yeah, but you know, Vu said this or Vu said that though, and then you have a cheerleader on your side. So when they do go and talk about it, you need to make sure at least one of the parties is your cheerleader, is is basically on your side. And that person who's on your side has to be the one that's tied to the numbers. And it's mm -hmm. going to be, you know, you're going to know who that is because you can actually blatantly ask them and say, you know what, I'm looking at your credit report right now. I want to ask you a question. How much are you sending on this credit card? Right. And then, and then the person who handles it, you're going to know who it is at that time. And that mm -hmm. opens up the question of like, okay, is that the bare minimum or are you sending above and beyond? 
and then you'll know how to approach them. If they're only able to send the minimum, then you can paint the, the picture of fear. If you're, if they're sending above and beyond, then you can paint the picture of speed of like, you know, I want to help you get this paid off much faster because that's what they want. Right. That makes sense. Right. That makes a lot. That's good, actually. Let me show you everything I know. Show 